Hi guys, I'm back again. And this time, I'm going to show you how to use the VFX Auto Vision Sensor and an Arduino board to control a driverless car using color recognition. The, the idea is that the car will steer itself and follow an object with a specific color. This should be good fun. We will skip a few steps, such as connecting to the PC and the groove connector, because these steps have been covered in my previous video. Check that video out if you need help with those steps. Let's get into step one. Okay guys, so I'm here at step one where I'm going to configure the VFX Auto Vision sensor using the VFX Auto utility. So since we already know how to connect the VFX Auto Vision sensor to the PC, I'll be configuring the Vision sensor to recognize the color yellow and red. Once I'm finished with configuring the Vision sensor, I'll test the vision sensor to make sure that it can detect yellow and red. And the reason why I changed the color to yellow is just to show you guys that our camera can detect different colors. So let's get into it. So first thing I'll open the utility. And as you can clearly see that it's on display here. Now I'm gonna go to function, select color detection, go to maximum display objects of two, and I'll select red, yellow, I'll cross this out, and I'll lastly go to apply. And there you can clearly see it's already um, detecting the different colors on this box that I'm using, yellow, red, it's great. So now guys, so since we've already configured the VIA Pixado Vision Sensor, and we already know how to connect the groove connector, let's go into step two. Okay guys, now we're here at step two, programming the VFX setup vision sensor using blocks. The first thing we're gonna do is open the VFX setup junior app. That's right here on my desktop. So all I'm gonna do is right click and press open. Normally it takes a few seconds to open up. Okay, and here it is. Next, we're going to create blocks using these two colors that allow us to control the driverless car. The color yellow will make the driverless car follow a yellow object and the red will make it stop. Okay, so let's create our first layer of blocks. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the control category and select the setup block. Then, I'm going to go to the vision sensor category and select initialize vision sensor and I'm going to put that here in the middle. Okay. This block will relate information to the vision sensor. Lastly, I'm going to select pin zero and I'm going to select pin one. The reason for doing this is to make sure that there's a connection between the Arduino board and the vision sensor. Rx means receive and Tx means transmit. Using pin zero and one is more reliable. Okay, so next I will go to the variable block category and I will select the block name declared integer value. I will create two integers to control the direction of the servo motor when it recognizes the object. The X integer is used to get the position of the object and the DX is used to get the position of the object from left to right. So let's create the first integer, which is gonna be X. I will click on this icon and click here, make a variable. And here's the pop-up on the screen. All I need to do is enter the letter X and press OK. And we've created the first integer. Next, I will get another block and do the same thing by clicking on the icon and clicking on make a variable. And again, do the same thing by clicking, by entering the X and click OK. Now that we have created our two integers, I'll put them together and insert them right here. 
Lastly, I will set the servo motor to always start on a 90 degree angle. To do this, I will go to the output unit category and select rotate the servo motor. Next, I will select pin nine it's here because the servo motor is connected to the groove connector D9. And then I will set it to 90 degrees. This section will make sure there's a communication to the servo motor via the Adreno board. The last thing I'm gonna do here is just insert it right here. Second layer of blocks. How to create blocks so that the servo motors left and right movement follows the yellow object. First thing I'll do here is go to the control category. Then I'm gonna get the set the if then block to create an event. Next, I will go to the vision sensor category and select object is detected and I'm gonna put it inside the if then block. This makes the via pixel to report that it is detecting an object via a command from the Arduino board. If this condition is true, the block inside will activate the event. To make this true, I will use another if then block to create another event. Next, I will go to the logic category and select the logic block. Then I will go back to the vision category and then I will select object type and put it in, insert it inside. And then I'm gonna go to get a color block and the color that I want is yellow. I will insert that if then block here and then I will insert this block here. This will allow the VFX setup to report that it is detecting an object that is yellow. Now I will create the blocks that will control the direction of the servo motor. I will create an X and DX integer block to make sure that the vision sensor detects the objects width and position. First, I will go to the variable category, select set I to block. I'm gonna put that over here. I'm gonna click on this icon and then the drop down menu will open. I will select X. Next, I will go to the math category, select two blocks like this. Now, now put them in together. Next, I will go to the vision category section, get the object position, insert it in the block. And then I'm gonna get the width of the object like this, set the equation to divide, and then enter two to track the center of the object. I'm gonna put that in here. And then I'm gonna insert that in the if then block. Second, I will go back to the variable category, select the same block, and then I'm going to select the drop down arrow menu, click on the X, go back to the math category, get this block, insert it in here, go back to the variable category, I'm gonna get this block, insert it inside, select X, and then I'm gonna go to the equation and put minus, and then I'm gonna enter the value of 50. We are doing this to make sure that the object is within a specific range and size of the vision sensor. So, sorry, so that the vision sensor can recognize and detect the object. Once I'm done with that, I will insert it at 
the bottom here. The last thing I'll do, I'll go to the in out category. I will select the put to build in LED to logic state block. Let me find it here. And then I'm gonna set that to high so that it, it turns on the motor. Next, I will go back to that same category and find the right to PMW block, which is here. And I'm gonna put that over here. I will select pin five and enter a value of 55. And I'll put those together. Then I will insert that right here at the bottom. Now I'll go to the control category and select another if then block to create the movement event. I'll insert that block underneath here. Next, I will go to logic block, select this one, and then I will insert a DX. I'll go to the variable category, click on here, open its drop down menu, select the X and insert it inside. I will set the equation to this sign, then select another block from the math category. Maybe this one. Put it inside. Within this block, I will go back to the vision category and then I will select the width. Blocked, insert it inside, and I will set it to divide side. I'll enter a value of minus two. And then lastly, I'll drag that and put it right in here okay guys next i'll go to the output unit category which is here at the bottom then i'm gonna get the rotate the server servo sorry motor put that here and i'm gonna go ahead and run right now and select my pin which is pin nine get some space put this over here next i'll go over to the math category i'm gonna get a constraint block and i'm gonna leave that here I'm going to use one of these value block, put it here. Okay. I want to insert that block right in here. Gotta be careful. Then I'm going to go back to the output unit category. I'm going to get the angle of the servo motor. And I'm going to insert that right. Sorry, right in here. Oh, it's got me. It'll take me a little while, so let me do that again. It's a bit hard. So next, I'm gonna go to the back to the math category. Next, I'm gonna get the map value. I'm gonna put that here. Within that map value, I'm gonna get a variable. Let me constrain. Put that inside. I'm gonna select from its drop down arrow x then i'm going to insert that right within here this is a bit long so you might want to expand the junior app screen next i'm going to select some value here i'm going to put minus then i'm going to set this to zero minus 50 then i'm going to select one to four and then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I will enter the constraint values, which low, which will be 45 and then high will be 135 degree to create a balance movement to the right. And I'm going to insert that right in here and then put it underneath this block. 
for the left movement i will click on the if then icon and the strolling menu will open up i will select else if i'll put that underneath here it's going to open up i'm going to go over to the logic category and select this block right here then i'm going to go back to the variable category and get this block i'm going to insert it click on the drop down menu select the x go back to my math category select a block from here i'm going to go to the vision sensor category i'm going to insert the width and i'm going to select divided by two and i'm going to insert that within the block click on the logic block and then click on this sign and i'm going to insert that into the else if block okay guys so for the left side uh movement basically we're gonna do almost the same thing as the right so all i'm gonna do for a very quick show you guys is right click and duplicate the block that i just made earlier and all i'm going to change here is from the minus to a plus sign and from negative 50 to positive 50 and that's it my constraint are all the same all the pins are the same and then i'm going to insert that right in here and then we have created a balance movement to the left okay guys now we're gonna create the blocks to make the driverless car stop so to create these blocks first go on the second column and click on the if then icon it's scrolling menu is going to open and i want you to take the else if blocks and slide it underneath you can see here there's a open up section you want to click here and close that the first thing i'm going to do here is go to the logic category i'm going to take this logic block I'm going to put this right here once i have this here I'm going to go to the vision sensor category and I'm going to take object type. That's what I want. And I'm going to take the color that I need. And then I'm going to slide this in here and I'm going to put this color here. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put that back right in here. The reason I'm doing this because I want the driveless car to stop when it recognizes a red object. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the output unit category and I'm going to take the rotate the servo motor block. I'm going to set that to pin nine. So the next thing I will do is I'm going to put a value of 90 degree angle. So when the servo motor powers off, the wheels are at an angle of 90 degrees when i'm done i will slide that right in here the last part of this i'm going to go to the in out category i need two blocks from here so the first block i will use is the put built in logic state block which is here then the second block that i'm going to take is going to be the right to p w m so on the on this block first one i'll select low next block i'm going to select pin five and i'm going to make sure that that's at a value of zero and i'll put this block together the reason i'm doing this is that i want the motor to turn off and then once i'm done i will side those two blocks here okay the last last step as i said before it's the last step I'm going to go to the control category and I'm going to put a de de delay time of 10 milliseconds. 
I'm doing this to set a timer on the motor. So that's it for these steps. The last thing I'll ask you guys is to carefully review the pins on your blocks. If you're not too sure about these pins, please go to your Arduino user manual. Now, let's get into the next step. Okay guys, step three, review the blocks combination and upload the codes to the driverless car. In my previous step, I explained to you guys to review the pins. So let's do that really quick. Here we have pin nine, pin nine, pin nine, pin five. So all the pins are right. Once we're done, I'll show you guys how to upload the codes to the Arduino board. If you don't know how to connect the Arduino board to the PC, you can review my previous video to see how that's done. So the first step to upload the codes would be to go to the no hardware section, click on the drop down menu, click on Arduino Uno. The next thing you want to do to establish the connection, click here, not connected, and boom, we are connected, connected to COM4. Click on connect to go back to our junior application platform, click to go editor. Next thing you want to do is the click on the code. So these are the generated codes from our blocks and simply just click on upload and the files are being uploading here. So this is going to take a few seconds. Also, please do not disconnect the driverless car from your PC while the codes are being uploaded. And we're almost there. We're finished. It says upload finished. The last thing I also want to like tell you guys here is that you can also save your file. It's quite simple. It's quite easy. Right up here in this corner where it says project next to it, mine is called video practice. You guys can call it whatever you want. You can click, you can simply click on the icon next to it, click on save project and an icon will just save your project forever. Or you can go as save as project and a pop-up will come out. You can rename it wherever you want. So that's it guys. Now that we're finished uploading, let's go into step four. Okay guys, so we've finished all our step. I have my driverless car. I have my two color objects. Now let's go do some testing.